Hey everybody, it's Chris. Welcome back to another quick tutorial video. And I know what you're thinking. It's 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 been quite a minute since we've uh, had a little chat, but I was literally trying not to die uh, with a bubonic plague or something. So hopefully you can forgive the my absence uh, due to that. So without further ado, today we're going to be talking about compound clips in uh, Final Cut Pro 10 and. Uh, interesting ways you can use it that aren't exactly what uh, it was designed for. So yeah, I think that's it. Let's just jump in to Final Cut Pro and uh, take a look. All right, so uh, the first thing we're gonna look at is going to be how you can take multiple layers, I guess you could talk, you could say in uh, Final Cut Pro 10 and combine them into one layer to make them easier to handle and also simplify your timeline because with stacking in Final Cut Pro 10, the more you stack, the taller your timeline is and it can become a bit of a hassle. And if you're like me and you like to stack effects and layers and transitions and things, then it can become unwieldy pretty quickly. So we're gonna look at how to take all of that stuff and create a compound clip out of it so you have one clip uh, that contains all of that stuff. So let's check it out. All right, so as you can see here, we have uh, one of my old projects open, the uh, first uh, tiny tut I did about making custom shaped bokeh. And as you can see right here, we have uh, you know three, three things stacked up here. This isn't too bad, but if there were gonna be more, it could very quickly become a problem. So I'm going to nest these all into a compound clip and kind of simplify my timeline a little bit. So easiest way to do that is like you see, highlight all three of them, go up to file, new, and compound clip. And then it asks you what the name of that is. I usually try to name the clips something so that I can find them later if there's a problem. So this is a cutting example. And now you see we have one clip, which is way cleaner and easier to deal with. And you might be wondering, well, what if I want to make changes to it? Say I don't like the positioning or the size of this. Uh, you can just double click and you actually go into the clip and you can get everything here. You can move around, say I want that to come in earlier, or say I want to scale this down some. I'm gonna come over here and do this. And then let's just say we'll, we'll scale it down a little bit uh, like that. And then we'll pull this over so that we don't see that below it. And now we have that transition, right? And so if we now click this little arrow and we go back, you actually see that the clip has been updated. So you can make any changes you want inside the compound clip. And then when you come back to your main timeline, they'll all be reflected there. And so as you can see, those changes have been reflected on the main timeline and you can just keep doing that. You can click in here. I didn't like that. So I'm going to undo all of those things and go back to the way it was. Uh, and then when I click and go back, you can see we're, we're back to the way we were before. So. Any changes you make in the multi, uh, the compound clip, I should say, uh, will be reflected here and it's non-destructive like anything in Final Cut Pro 10. So that is the first way to uh, use this feature. Okay, so the other thing that we can use this for is for animation. And that sounds a little weird, but just bear with me here. Uh, some of you might know, some of you might not know that I uh, am working on an animated TV show in my copious free time. And one of the things I had to figure out how to do was to take uh, stills, because a lot of times you do animation, you uh, export a series of images and then combine them later into moving pictures, as opposed to generating a uh, video file because you get higher quality. And so I needed to find a way to take the uh, exported images from my animation program uh, and combine them together into 24 frames per second for uh, delivery to the web, and that's where compound clips come in. So we'll look at that really quick. Uh, and this is actually incredibly cool because uh, there's a lot of really interesting things you can do, like 8-bit animation. If you wanted to add 8-bit flourishes, like um, Scott Pilgrim hearts and all of that stuff, the stuff that you saw in that that was really cool, you can add those things to your videos really easily by uh, either creating those 8-bit animations, finding open source ones or free ones, and then importing them into your your uh, project and using a compound clip to make them into an animation and then be able to position it anywhere and treat it like any other video clip. So uh, it's very powerful if you are imaginative and uh, creative with it. So let's jump into the editor and see how you do it. 
So the first thing we need to do is find all of our images and drag them into the timeline. I just did a, a two second uh, clip of this so we can use it to test. So we're gonna drop it into the timeline here and uh, just do 4K, because that's how I uh, did that, 24P, and we're good. Okay, so now you can see that we have it up here, and okay, the first thing we need to do now that we have imported our images is to change their duration because Final Cut Pro gives them a specific duration and we need them to be much, much shorter so that they fill 24 of these images in one second of footage. So we're going to select them all with Command A and then go up to Modify, Change Duration, and I believe just two is what we want for a good smooth bit of animation. So. So now we go and hit spacebar and you can see it plays fine. Okay, so now we have all of these tiny images and that's great because it looks fine when you scrub through, but they're really difficult to work with because they're so tiny and they're little slivers on the timeline. So we want to take this and convert it to a compound clip. So again, we're gonna file new uh, compound clip and we name this Jamie Walking, which is the name of my character and that's what he's doing. And we hit OK, and now we have an actual video clip that we can do all kinds of stuff to. So if we want to go in here and grab an adjustment layer and throw that on top, make this a little bigger here, and we want to do some color grading to it. How about that? So we go into our color grading stuff. Let's see. We'll go to MLUT, and we'll just throw a LUT on here to make it easy for us instead of actually doing color grading, but just to show you what you can do now. Uh, we wait a second for my library, and we'll go in here, and let's do cinematic. 709, because this is not... So look, already we can add some blue in there, we can do more warm. I like Baby Driver's pretty nice. Ooh, Alien Covenant. That's pretty fun, so let's just use that one. We're gonna hit OK, and now we have added a LUT to this clip. You can hit, see it's ready to go. And you can keep doing that. Anything that you can apply to a video clip, you can apply to this uh, compound clip now because it functions exactly the same. Okay, so that's it. Like I said, pretty quick, but uh, an interesting use of that feature, especially when it comes to using it to keep your timeline clean and kind of combine all of those layers into something a bit more manageable. So yeah, uh, if you liked this type of video, these quick hit tip videos, especially about Final Cut Pro 10, because that's my editing suite of choice, and there's not a lot out about it. Uh, everyone's doing Premiere Pro and After Effects tutorials. So uh, if you'd like to see more like that, please let me know in the comments or find me on Twitter at Chris J. Davis and let me know there because I would love to talk more about it. It's uh, I love the application and it's incredibly powerful uh, for people who do YouTube stuff like us. Uh, so yeah, that's it. And I will see you guys in the next video.